Hollister Planning Commission meeting to order. Um, we did uh, swear in officers this evening. Uh, myself, uh, Lenore, and uh, Greg, we had Greg. Yeah, Greg, I'm sorry. I was looking the wrong way. Uh, so we did the election of officers this evening. Uh, verification of agenda posting. No, 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 we didn't I'm sorry. The election, of officers. election of officers. Oh, yes, please. okay, I'm sorry. Uh, election of officers. So do we have, how do we do this? Is a motion or is it a uh, nomination of, of uh, for election of officers for chairman? Oh, chairman. okay, I'm sorry. Uh, so election of officers. Uh, I'd like to nominate David T. Boyd for chairman. I second. And I, we have a first and a second. I guess I accept. No, I'm not. I'm not Carol, but uh, I'll accept Alvarez, the nomination. Alvarez, I believe, is uh, oh, you are. Oh, that's right. Oh, no. Uh-oh. <laughs> Did you want to? Did you want to take the? I will accept that nomination. Sir. Okay. So we have Commissioner Boy as as chair, and do we have vice chair? Uh, do what you want. I nominate Carol as vice chair. All right. Yeah. And I, all right. And second. Motion and a second for uh, Commissioner Lenore as as vice chair. All those in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> Thank you. All righty. Yeah, uh, so we so I guess I guess uh, we'll can I just take it from here or absolutely. do we? Absolutely. Can I just take or do we want to switch? Let's take. It. Oh, okay. I don't know if they have our name plates there. Okay. So. Hey, I'll do that. Maybe um, Abraham can switch them. Yes. 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 Switch the name plates. Okay. Yeah. Well, before I. Resume as being chair. I just want to thank Gabriel Torres for being such a great chairman for the last thank you. two, you at least two years. <laughs> you were really thank good, you. Gabriel, and I really appreciate it. Yeah, you're very good. One. Thank you. Yeah. Chief. So, uh, okay. So, okay, we're at uh, verification of agenda posting. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The agenda was posted on Friday, August twenty second, two thousand fourteen, at four eighteen p.m. Commissioner Torres, will you lead us into the Pledge of Allegiance, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Gabriel. Have the Pledge of Allegiance, please. The I mean, the, uh, excuse me, the, the roll call. Sure. <laughs> Co Commissioner Alvarez? Here. In a while. Commissioner Torres? Here. Commissioner Lenore? Present. Commissioner Harvey? Here. And Chairman Huboy? Here. Okay, we'll uh, ask for the approval of minutes dated July 24th, 2014. A chance to review the minutes. Entertain a motion? I will second that motion. Okay, I'll uh, have a motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Minutes are approved. Communications from public on items not listed on the agenda. Do we have any speaker cards, uh, Abraham? Not for the communications from the public. Um, okay. No, we don't at this time. Okay, then we go on to public hearings. Item number one, extension of minor subdivision 2012-1 and site and architectural application number 2012 Dash six, Community Food Bank in San Benito County slash Verismo Henry, Patricia Farm, Farm Trust and all. The applicant is requesting an extension of the approval for our site and architectural review 2012-6 to construct a 13,632 square foot pre-engineered metal building consisting of a 3,072 square foot office and a 10,560 square foot warehouse. The request includes the extension of the approval of minor subdivision 2012-1 to subdivide an 11.02 acre parcel into two lots consisting of four acres and 7.02 acres at 172 McCloskey Road. 
be more specifically described as San Benito County Assessor's Parcel 051-110-011. CEQA has mitigated negative declaration. Can I have a staff report, please? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good evening. The Planning Commission approved Site and Architectural Review 2012-6 on July 26, 2012 for the construction of a 13,632 square foot pre-engineered metal building consisting of 3,072 square foot office and a 10,560 square foot ware warehouse. The applicant is requesting a one-year extension for the approval. Thank you, Bill. Um, Section 1724190D of the Zoning Ordinance limits the approval of a site and architectural review to 24 months but allows an applicant to request a one-year extension. A request for an extension can be approved approved conditionally or denied. Staff recommends approval of the extension with changes to the conditions included in Planning Commission Resolution 2012-21. The applicant discussed with staff regarding the approval and expressed concern that they may not be able to secure funding by the time the approval expired. A letter from the applicant was provided explaining the reasons for the extension requ request and it was included in your packet. With that, the applicant is uh, the staff recommends that the Planning Commission approve the attached resolution approving a one-year extension of Site and Architectural Review 2012-6. Are there any questions for staff? Any questions from the commissioners? Okay, with no questions, we'll open up the public hearing for at 6-6. Uh, six, six. Are there any, any speakers? Yes, Jim Dassel. My name is Jim Dassel. I'm the president of Dassel's Petroleum and an adjoining property owner to the proposed project. And I thank you for an opportunity to speak tonight. I have publicly responded to this project at, at previous public hearings and have not been against the project, um, provided the project does not encroach on others or, and or other business activity. Many times that can be the case and I want to make sure that that doesn't happen in this setting it appears that the project would be an enhancement to the neighborhood. So frankly, um, I, um, I endorse the project as it's presented. I, I do have some questions that, that were not revealed in the staff report or the conditions of approval that I was provided. And I'll ask them kind of uh, possibly staff can address them accordingly or consider these as the project moves forward. Um, I would be interested to know uh, the sanitary system hookup, the water hookup, and the utility hookups, where will be the source for those? Um, I have discussed that uh, with Mary Ann on, the, on, the, on previous meetings with respect to that, and um, in some cases that uh, might be a little bit uh, undecided at this point. It does mention in some of the staff report work that the stormwater retention would be addressed and I would like to know if that stormwater retention would be for just the building or for the parking areas or the surfaces where there could be runoff. Um, thirdly, uh, it appears that the entrance of the proposed property may be coming off McCluskey Road, but I don't see how, I don't see if that's being addressed. If that's the case with the location of where the proposed project is on the property as it would be subdivided, it would be quite a distance from McCluskey Road and I would want to make sure that the access is in fact from McCluskey Road and if it is, would the parking areas be paved as well as the access road? Uh, lastly, if the entrance is from McCluskey Road, I would wonder about a significant issue with respect to the intersection of traffic, a, tra a traffic issue with respect to McCluskey Road, the San Philippi um, Road going out to the airport both north and south, but more importantly the issue with re respect to the San Philippi Frontage Road. At different times of the day there, uh, particularly in the morning uh, when folks are going to work, um, noontime, and around five o'clock, that is a congestion there that could cause some problems. Not that they're not already at going down to the existing food bank site, but I would see there would be challenges and backup on the McCluskey Road side turning into the property. I will take my answers as 
they see appropriate or as it moves along. Thank you for listening to my uh, input. Thank you, Mr. Dassel. Uh, on response to some of Mr. Dassel's questions, uh, Abraham, can you or David? Sure. Respond to some of those with the sure. uh, infrastructure and the access. Very well, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, we are looking at our utility base maps right now to look at um, the actual the actual lines for the sewer, water, and storm drainage. Um, there would be city of Hollister utilities that will be provided to to the site. Um, we're looking at the we're trying to look and see the specific locations of of the site, but. Uh, when it comes to sanitary water utility services will be s city of Hollister provided it is within the city limits the property just to the east is actually um, outside of the city limits that's where that's where the unincorporated area begins um, so the precise location though just trying to pull it up right now on on the screen to see if we can okay so if I can I can answer that um, okay as shown on the on the approved plans, the sewer the sewer will tie into the existing uh, county facilities uh, immediately to the north. Uh, it shows uh, that both water and sewer will will tie into existing infrastructure at that location. Um, yes, the access is being moved to uh, come off of McCloskey Road. Um, the uh, driveway will be improved. Uh, they'll be required to, at a minimum, install a all-weather access road back to the property. Paving will be, um, I believe, is proposed to uh, for the parking of that of that area. Um, Stormwater. They will, uh, upon development of the property, they will be needing to comply with the. Uh, new uh, general permit conditions for low impact development and storm stormwater retention uh, they will be required to uh, to meet all the conditions and uh, requirements of the city of hollister's general uh, well city of hollister's uh, grading ordinance uh, which refers back to the new general plan or uh, general permit from the regional water quality control board Would um, would that apply? Do you think uh, to the whole parking area then for the stormwater detention? It, the stormwater detention and the low impact developments will com uh, will apply to the entire site okay. uh, for um, that for the site that's going to be paved right. um, and covered. It uh, exceeds the. Um, 2,500 square feet, and therefore they will be. Uh, there's a certain um, uh, requirement for for stormwater. Again, those requirements will become effective upon development of each of these uh, parcel maps, or you know when they start developing the uh, the project. Mm -hmm. Looks like they have a quite a bit of a area of, ret of retention there behind the building to the side. So. Cursory look at it. Looks like that uh, that's going to be addressed. Were there any other questions? Uh, I think that, that pretty much covers it. Yeah. Okay. Any other speakers? Oh. Oh, the traffic. Yeah. Okay. So the uh, the traffic going out on McCloskey Road is deemed to be a insufficient, insignificant amount of traffic um, coming and going. Uh, yeah, there will be traffic uh, coming from all parts of the city, uh, but they most likely will not be using um, the San Felipe frontage road and in as much as the main access or the access will be coming off of McCloskey. Um, the, um, as they leave, some people may go up the, the frontage road, but most likely everybody will go to the uh, uh, either um, go east on McCloskey, or they'll go west towards the intersection of San Felipe. Um, I I don't foresee that as, as being a issue at that at that signalized intersection. Okay, thank you, David. 
Any other speakers uh, on this item? No more speakers, Mr. Chair, for this item. No more speakers. I'll close the public hearing at 6.15 and bring it back to the commission. Any discussion on, on the quote, extension? How many quotes do go there first? We have to take the vehicle in. I think it probably a lot of vehicular, there's a lot of vehicles that go to that, right? I believe there are certain times and, and right, days that are assigned. Time. Yeah. I believe there are certain times that are assigned. I don't, I'm not sure yeah, if the applicant is here. Yeah, I'm not sure if the applicant is here to address that, but I know that there are certain times and certain hours where there's okay. the distribution time. It's considerably uh, increased in the last few years. Yes. Yes, and I think that's one of the main reasons why they want to expand to this new facility. Yes. yes. Were they experiencing traffic problems at the other place due to high volume? Storage problems, mainly mainly storage problems that but not, never. But not, not vehicles, maybe. Yeah, I'm not sure that's about that. Yeah, yeah that uh, <coughs> limited parking at their existing yeah. site. Yeah. Yeah. Any other discussion from the commission? Yep, one for you. Okay. Um, what's the pleasure of the commission? I'll make a motion. Uh, I have one more oh, sorry. So oh, okay. the applicant with the changed conditions, they were good with the changes. The additional conditions. Correct. With the additional conditions, they're mainly. Say, so okay. Correct. They're. Say concerns, they'd be here. They would be here. <laughs> they were mainly mainly regarding stormwater management, um, community facilities district, uh, the newly formed community facilities district okay. where they would have to annex to. Yeah. So these are just changes that have been made over the last two years since the approval. Uh, we want to make okay. sure that right. the project is consistent with. With the current regulations. Correct. With the current regulations. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Okay, any other comments or questions? <coughs> Would you entertain yep. a motion? I entertain a motion on item number one. So uh, do we have a resolution number? Uh, resolution number 2014-24. Yeah, I, I move that we adopt resolution 2014-24 extending uh, the extension of site and architectural 20-12, 2012-6 as well as the extension of minor subdivision 20-2012-1 with the amended conditions as stated. I'll second that motion. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? And item number one has been approved. <coughs> Thank you. Okay. We go to item number two. Extension of site and architectural application number 2012-8. Pacific West Communities Incorporated, the applicant is requesting an extension of the approval for Site and Architectural Review 2012-8 for the construction of 56 low-income apartment units and one manager's unit on the southern 3.5 acres of the 13.73 acre project site located at 1619 San Juan Road, being more specifically described as San Benito County Assessor's Parcel number 052-090-014. Sequel is mitigated negative declaration. Abraham? Yes, thank you. Mr. Chair, the Planning Commission approved Saturn Architectural Review 2012-8 on July 26, 2012 for the construction of 56 low-income apartment units and one manager's unit at 1619 San Juan Hollister Road, as you mentioned. The applicant is requesting a one-year extension for the approval. In addition to that, um, that staff recommends the approval extension. There's going to be changes to the conditions included in the Planning Commission Resolution 2012-24, very similar to the previous agenda item. The applicant, the applicant has discussed with staff regarding the approval and expressed concern that they are trying to secure project funding by the time the, appro the approval has expired. And there also was a letter provided by the applicant in reference to this approval that was included in your packet. And with this, staff recommends that the Planning Commission approve the attached resolution approving a one-year extension of Site and Architectural Review 2012-8. Are there any questions for staff? Any questions for staff? Okay, with no questions, we'll open up the public hearing for at 6.20. Any speaker cards? 
Mr. Chair, the, there are no speaker, speaker cards, but the applicant did come uh, here. He's in, the, he's in the audience, and he's willing to answer any questions if, if, you, if you have any for him. Will the applicant care to address the commission? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my name is Ken Koss from TK Development, representing Pacific West Communities. Uh, we're here tonight to ask for an extension. The project is exactly the same as it was when the Planning Commission approved it a year ago. The only thing, unfortunately, we weren't successful in the first round of funding, so now we have to wait for the next round of funding that will come next March. So. And I'll be happy to answer any questions if the commission okay. has any. No questions? Okay. Thank you, sir. I need a sign. Anybody else care to speak on this item? No further speakers. I'll close the public hearing at 620 and bring it back to the commission. So we're looking at the extension of site and architectural application. Number 2012-8. Comments or questions? I was not aware of this project, but I mean, right. I always find affordable housing. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know all the specifics other than what I read in here, but yeah, I don't know how it played out in, in the original meeting. I, I wasn't on here, so mm -hmm. I can't respond to it, but I think it's a, always a good concept. Right. Yeah, it's all, always some, somewhat. Well, I do have a question. Okay. There's no access from South Street. It's it's all, it's all where's the access road at? It's gonna be San Juan Road. Oh yeah, at this time. Mm -hmm. right yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Does but it there's actually touch back there on the South Street end? On to South Street end? Yeah, um, or is there a property in between there? I couldn't Let me go back that. to the Yeah, I think there's another an aerial. See how Yeah, South okay. South Side is San Road over here. South Street yeah. way down. The, the public the public. Oh it's down it's yeah. more it's more south. Okay. Yeah, this is this is the lot that yeah that's near South Side Road South Street end. Okay. So yeah, so it doesn't doesn't really it touch. doesn't abut up to it. Yes. Okay. Now there's always. <coughs> Whose district? Is that Chris's district or? It is, huh? So have you guys had community meetings regarding this development already? Or? Okay. With the, um, you know, with the funding issue with affordable housing, trying to get it penciled out with the weighing the impact fees, you know, I understand the situation for the possible, you know, delay, secure additional funding. Any other uh, comments? I entertain a motion on item two. I'll make a motion to approve the extension of site and architectural uh, application number 2012-8, uh, PC resolution 2014-25. Second. I have a, a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Item number two has been approved. <laughs> Congratulations. Good luck on that funding. <laughs> okay. All right. Good luck on that too. All right. We go to item number three, pre-zone application number 2014-8. Namar A California Limited Partnership. The applicant is requesting to pre-zone two. 0.17 acres of land for low density residential performance overlay zone R1 1 LPZ for future annexation into the corporate limits of Hollister. The project is for pre zoning for annexation only. No development is proposed at this time. The property is located east of San Benito Street, west of Cienega Road, southwest of the East View Drive and Cienega Road intersection being more specifically described as San Benito County Assessor's Parcel Number 020-170-041. CEQA is categorically exempt from the CEQA pursuant to Section 15332 Infill Development Projects Class 32. Abraham, staff report please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The applicant is requesting approval of pre-zone for annexation of 2.17 acres of land in the low density residential performance overlay district. The project is for pre-zoning for annexation only, and as mentioned, there's no development at this time. 
pending pre-zone and annexation, the site would be zoned low density residential district performance overlay zone R1 LPZ. Pursuant to section 1704010 of the Hollister Municipal Code, the low density residential R1 zoning district is consistent with the low density residential LDR land use category of the general plan, which allows one to eight units per net acre. The lot is located within the city's sphere of influence and is contiguous to the city's limits to the east. The zoning designation for the county of San Benito currently is rural residential. The, the project is exempt from CEQA, section 15332, infill development, class 32. The project is for pre-zoning only, consistent with the general plan designation of low density residential, as mentioned. No development is proposed at this time. Future development of the site would occur within the city limits on a project site no more than five acres, substantially surrounded by residential and other urban uses. The project site has no value to habitat for endangered, rare, or threatened species. Approval, the project will not result in any significant effects relating to traffic, noise, air quality, or water quality, and the site can be adequately served by all required utilities and public services. On March 17, 2014, the City Council of the City of Hollister authorized staff to initiate pre-zoning of the property. Pending pre-zoning approval, the City Council will be asked to approve a resolution requesting that LAPCO, LAPCO to initiate proceedings for annexation of the property. LAPCO San Benito County has adopted policies for review of annexation request to cities. The proposed project was determined to be consistent with LAPCO policy. For example, LAPCO policy 2.3.3 requires that the boundary resulting from annexation must not create areas difficult to serve. As stated previously, the entire 2.17 acre site is within the city's sphere of influence and bordered by city limits of the city limits of Hollister. Also LAFCO policy section 2.3.6 requires that the annexation must be compatible with the city's development plan. The proposed pre-zoning conforms to the general plan land use designation of low density residential as stated by Jill. The annexation request is also consistent with land use and community design element policies 6.1 for infill development and land use policies 6.3 for orderly growth. With this, staff recommends that the Planning Commission review the applicant's request, receive all written and oral testimony regarding the proposal, and consider approving the attached resolution recommending to the City Council approval of pre-zone application number 2014-5, subject to the findings and conditions contained in the draft resolution. Does the Commission have any questions? Thank you, Abraham and Jill. Sure. Any questions for staff? No questions. We open up the public hearing at 6.27. Any speaker cards? No speaker cards, Chairman Gibor. Is the applicant? I do not see the applicant here. No, the applicant is not here. Okay, I close the public hearing at 6.27 and bring it to the commission for comment. Questions? We're, so we're going from a rural, rural residential county zone to a low density residential City, city uh, land use designation from the general plan. That's correct. Okay. Uh, I think it's pretty straightforward. Okay, I'll, um, make a, I'll move that. I move that the Planning Commission adopt CP resolution 2014-26 recommending to the City Council uh, pre-zoning Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And pre-zone application number 2014-8 <coughs> has been approved. We go to item number four, site and architectural application number 2014-8. That's uh, obviously a mistake there. We got two yeah. <laughs> uh, numbers that are are the same. But it's, don't, shouldn't it have another different number? Or maybe I'm wrong. Oh, okay, yeah, you're right, absolutely. Thank you, Commissioner Lenore. It's nice to have you sit in shotgun, that's for sure. <laughs> All right, Ted Intravia, the applicant is requesting the approval of site and architectural application for the construction of a duplex development to be included on a parcel with an existing single family dwelling on a 0.34 acre site in the Old Town medium density residential zoning district. 
The site is located at 1342 San Benito Street, being more specifically described as San Benito County Assessor's Parcel Number 056-200-028. The CEQA is categorically exempt from CEQA pursuant to Section 15332, Infill Development Projects, Class 32. Abraham, do you yes. want to take this? Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chair, the applicant is requesting approval of a Saturn architectural application for the construction of a duplex development to be included with, a, with an existing single family dwelling on a 0.34 acre site in the Old Town Medium Density Residential Zoning District of the City of Hollister. The site plan illustrates that the project will include landscaping, private open space, common open space, and driveway access from Hodel Alley. At the November 8, 2001 Planning Commission meeting, the project was awarded two residential allocations per the approved Planning Commission minutes of November 8, 2001. The residential building would consist of two bedroom, two bath attached units. Each unit would have its own single car garage and laundry facilities. All buildings would be one story tall with a 14 foot, four inch maximum ridge height. The elevations illustrate Old Town design requirements with architectural styles including neoclassical revival and mission revival features. The project is consistent with residential standards for yards in section 1704030, residential general development standards of the Hollister Municipal Code. The site plan illustrates a driveway access on Hodel Alley to the west. Each unit would have a single car garage attached and one attached garage and one parking space directly to the side of the garage. Per section 17.18.060, number of parking spaces required, multifamily housing requires one and one half space per one to two bedroom units. The project meets parking requirements. The proposed project is consistent with the medium density residential designation of the general plan and the OTM zoning district. This district allows for eight to 12 units per acre. The project as proposed with the two, two units and then one existing unit conforms to allowable density. The proposed project would implement goals and policies in the 2005 City of Hollister General Plan, including land use 8.3, which requires that new development in multifamily neighborhoods support rather than detract from existing residential character of the area. The proposed project is a multifamily development in an infill site of the city adjacent to existing residential. Land use 3.5 requires the provision of usable open space in multifamily residential developments the proposed project would include ground floor private yard space for each unit and a common open lawn area between both units. The proposed project has been designated to be compatible with adjoining residential land uses. The elevations would convey neoclassical revival and mission revival style form of architecture that is consistent with section 1704050 Old Town Zoning District Supplemental Design Standards. Each unit would have a, a with this, that means that each, each unit would have a peered archway and walls with broad, unadorned surfaces. With this, staff recommends that the Planning Commission review the applicant's request, receive all written and oral testimony regarding the proposal, and consider approving Site and Architectural Application 2014-8, subject to the findings and conditions contained in the draft resolution. Are there Thank any questions for staff? Thank you, Joe. Mm -hmm. Questions? Uh, just one on, on uh, Hodel. And this map it shows drive, that one shows alley. Is that a uh, city maintained uh, road? Is that a private road? That's city. That's city, right, David? Yeah, that <coughs> that's correct. It is a city maintained alley. Alley? Yes. Okay. So there's sufficient space for vehicle traffic through that alley, I'm assuming. And yeah, the, the alley is meant to serve um, the properties that front the alley. Oh, okay. It's not meant as through traffic. So you won't, uh, you'll find it sometime on alleys, but it's not really meant for through traffic. That's okay. really, they need to go to Monterey or, or San Benito Street for, for through traffic. So it's, it's sufficient for serving the residents and the projects on the alley. Looks like we're, we're getting this stormwater detention as relatively ubiquitous here. We got, we've got some here on the north part of this property, it looks like. Is that stormwater detention that's going to? Over here, um, the bio swells, yeah. the landscaped area.
haven't been through it for a while, so. This project will be required to improve the full frontage of the alley from one side to the other. The rest of the alley, there's portions that have been improved. There's portions that are in not really good shape. And um, yeah, it's, it doesn't meet the nexus to uh, have them improve the entire alley. Oh, no. So, so top prohibited right. Areas, but what's the condition of the road from Nash Road to the beginning of this property? It's pretty good, right? From, from I believe so, yeah. Yeah, it's not that bad. Right, I believe so. Yes, he'll be required to, to improve the alley from Just side to side. Okay. Yeah, I agree. Any other with the staff? Okay, I open up the public hearing now at 635. Um, any speaker cards? There are no speaker cards, but the applicant is present in the audience. I see the applicant. Do we have any questions for the applicant? Would the applicant care to address the commission? Unless you have to? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't have any questions for the applicant. Okay. And uh, no further speakers. I'll close the public hearing at 636. And we'll bring it back for discussion. Any comments, questions? Make a motion to approve site and architectural application uh, number 2014-8, uh, PC resolution 2014-27. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. So the item four, site and architectural application number 2014-8 has been approved. Congratulations. We go to item. Thanks for coming. We go to item number five, tentative map application number 2014-2. Award Homes Incorporated, the applicant is requesting tentative map approval to subdivide a 19.49 acre site into 82 lots for single family residences. The project site is located between Southside Road, Lad Lane, and San Benito Street, being more specifically described as San Benito County Assessor's parcel number 020-280-002. CEQA is mitigated negative declaration. Abraham oh, or Jill? Thank you, Mr. Chair. <laughs> the applicant is requesting approval for a tentative map to subdivide 19.49 acres into the R1 LPZ, Low Density Residential Performance Overlay Zoning District, into 82 single family residential lots. 12 open space parcels, parcels A through L, public streets and right of ways located south of Southside Road, west of Lad Lane, and east of San Benito Street. Most residential lots proposed to be between 4,500 and 5,500 square feet. Larger residential lots on the site would be mainly within the cul-de-sacs. A minimum 1,000 square feet of open space will be provided for each residential lot. The tentative map illustrates a net density of 6.89 dwelling units per acre. The illustrative plan, as you can see up, up here on the screen, shows parcel A as an open space area with multiple trees and shrubs and a Frisbee golf course recreational amenity. Parcel A is located on the northwest area of the site and would measure 0.48 acres. Parcel, parcel L would be an open space area with multiple tree shrubs and benches. Parcel L is located on the southwest area of the site and would measure 0.26 acres. Parcel B would be an open space area with multiple trees, shrubs, and a tot lot recreational amenity. The applicant has, has previously proposed a horseshoe, horseshoe pits as an alternative to the recreational amenity on parcel B. So as an alternative to the tot lot. The Planning Commission can make a determination of the type of recreational amenity for Parcel B. Uh, staff is recommending the tot lot alternative for Parcel B for parents to bring their children for recreational play. Parcel B is located where Southside Road and proposed Street A converge towards the west side of the project and that, that parcel would measure 0.11 acres. Access to the site will be provided by way of a new roadway connection to Nora Drive and future Southside Road extension. The site layout allows for continuous traffic circulation. Nora Drive is a two-lane local street extending north and south direction in the center of the project site, bisecting Southside Road and ending on the south property line of the site. All streets temporarily ending at property lines shall be barricaded in accordance with city standards, and there shall be a sign posted stating that the road will be extended. 
Southside, Southside Road that currently ends on the northern property line of the project site west of the intersection with Nora Drive would be extended. Southside Road would be improved across the frontage of the project with curb, gutter, and sidewalks, street paving, lighting, and landscaping with irrigation and will accommodate two travel lanes as shown on the tentative map bisecting the, pro bisecting the project site. A class two bicycle lane would be installed along the south side of Southside Road along the project frontage. Southside Road would be extended to and intersect with San Benito Street Extension in alignment identified in the West Side Boulevard Extension Study. The improvements will consist of a minimum of two travel lanes along this alignment. Thank you, Joe. On November 21st, 2013, the City of Hollister Planning Commission approved resolution number 2013-28, recommending that the City Council of the City of Hollister approve an ordinance adopting the pre-zoning of the Lad Ranch site and recommending approval of the mitigative negative declaration. On December 16, 2013, the City Council of the City of Hollister adopted the mitigated negative declaration for the project site. On Jan January 21st, 2014, the City Council adopted Ordinance 1097, an ordinance pre-zoning the project site to low density residential performance overlay zone, and also adopted a resolution authorizing the mayor to execute an annexation agreement with the owner of the Lad Ranch property, along with a resolution of application requesting LAFCO of San Benito County to initiate proceedings for the annexation of territory. We have a slide here in the screen kind of outlining the, the process with the dates and the entitlements. On July 24, 2014, LAFCO approved the annexation of the 19.49 acre project site. Previously, on June 25, 2014, the City of Hollister Planning Commission awarded 25 residential allocations for the Ladd Ranch project site. A condition in the attached tentative map draft resolution requires that the applicant obtain a total of 82 residential allocations prior to obtaining final map approval. Low impact development strategies would be implemented in the development to reduce the amount of stormwater run runoff pursuant to section 1716.140, stormwater management of the Hollister Municipal Code. The Ladd Ranch tentative map is proposed in close proximity to Ladd Lane Elementary School. Some of the school safety features for the project include sidewalks installed on Southside Road and Ladd Lane along the project frontages and a bike lane installed along the south side of Southside Road along the project frontage. Also, a curve ramp consistent with ADA requirements shall be placed on the southwest corner of Ladd Lane Southside Road intersection. Crosswalks, school crosswalks, shall also be included on the west and south legs of the intersection. Also, school zone warning signs shall be installed on eastbound Southside Road on the on the approach to Ladd Lane. The project is consistent with land use policy 8.4 neighborhood scale because the project's site will pres preserve and enhance the character of the existing residential neighborhood. With this, staff recommends that the Planning Commission review the applicant's request, receive all written and oral testimony regarding the proposal, and consider approving tenant map number 2014-2 subject to the findings and conditions contained in the draft resolution. Does the commission have any questions for staff? I, I have a question. Sure. So if I, am I correct to say that they were awarded 25 allocations. This is for, uh, this, this proposal is for 82 lots. So they were awarded the 25 allocations and they're going through the tentative map process. Then they're gonna have to come back and for the additional allocations. Correct, correct, okay. prior to final map approval they must come back to obtain okay. the rest of the allocations to have a total of 82. Okay, where, can you have, an, can you tell us where we are on the the units, on the allocations? On the allocations for this year? Yeah. Uh, I know we have just a few, no. le less, I think we have less than 20, if, if that, and I think uh, just, just from what we heard in the past from the commission and also based on the growth management ordinance, we also wanna reserve some for infill development for, for projects that have ex an existing unit and maybe they want to add a, a, another unit or a duplex such as the previous project, Mr. Entrevilla. And so therefore at, at this time we just decided to try to focus those allocations that are left for that, for, for those purposes for the rest of the year. And then next year as we have the next round of, of allocations and be able to have the applicants come in and apply for, for additional allocations. 
Yeah, I we have a question. Sure. Uh, am I uh, right in my assumption that the open areas will be maintained by the developer? It's not a city thing, right? The, the open space areas, they will be required to be uh, and to annex into a community community facilities oh, district. So they are city areas. That that is correct. It will be a community facilities district that was just newly formed by the city um, <laughs> by the city, and they will be um, property owners will be contributing uh, uh, a tax for the park fees. For the for the yeah. c correct for the maintain so maintenance of the city will be responsible for maintenance. The city will be responsible for the maintenance based on the community facilities district. Okay, so on the community facilities district number four, each project is um, going to be paying uh, their share or you know the the cost to maintain any of the infrastructure that is uh, put in. Um, this replaced the landscape and lighting district. Um, we will not be annexing any other projects into the landscape and lighting district ninety three dash one. So this. The property owners, they will be, uh, as they purchase, they will be uh, contributing toward in their tax bill uh, cost for the landscaping and lighting, uh, cost to maintain any of the drainage features that uh, are accessible to the public. They will be paying for the cost to maintain the uh, recreational areas, which are also drainage features for some of them. Uh, so all that additional cost uh, will be collected in in the tax bills and then that should be enough money for the city to go in and, and maintain those um, those facilities. That's a little bit of my concern, so I'm going to send a message. If we're going to approve this and it's going to be city maintained, five years from now I don't want to see it a week back and not maintained and the landscape drought, drought dried up. I know you're going to probably use drought resistant landscape, right? But here's what I don't want to see. Much like the landscaping in front of the sound walls on 93-1. They're not taken care of, and I'm tired of looking at it. So if we're gonna do this, and the city's gonna take responsibility for this, then I really wanna see it maintained, and I'm gonna watch it. If I don't think it's being maintained, then I'm gonna be expressing my displeasure at that. So I wanted to put that for the record. Okay, and just uh, to, that to um, satisfy your concerns, uh, CFD number four includes escalators so that as, uh, as um, things get more expensive to uh, to maintain, uh, then the cost uh, to the property owners will increase. That's something that wasn't in the landscape and lighting district, and um, this will provide us the ability to continue maintaining them in perpetuity or forever. <laughs> We won't have a choice in that matter. I really want to see it maintained, and that means uh, maintenance. <coughs> Are we clear on the alternative for the top lot? I, I'm struggling a little bit. I know we need you to pick. Uh, do we understand the, the differences there? Yeah, okay. I think that makes more sense. Then. Good. I, uh, I just have a, a comment on the Frisbee Golf, the little Frisbee Golf area there. I just, if, if this is approved, that would be, am I correct? I, that would be the first one in the city of Hollister. I ha believe so. Have I, you I don't ever see played a one? Yes, I have. It's Thanks for cool. asking. <laughs> yeah. this, is this is something that is a new idea. Yeah. I like to see new ideas. Yes. Uh, I think that's great. I, mm -hmm. and, and I'll just it's wrap it up by saying I think since the adults are having some recreation there, it's more geared towards adults. I really think we should do a tot lot instead of horseshoe pits because you're serving the adults on the frisbee. Maybe we can serve the little guys on, on the tot lot. But I'm excited to see something new. Yeah, I am too. <laughs> bike lane, I like that too. You know, that's nice. we, we don't have enough of those now. The bike lane, yeah. Commissioner yeah. Harvey? Yeah, I do have a question, Abraham. Do it, are we calling, is, does this call out for a sound wall along San Benito Street given the high traffic volume that's usually on San Benito or is, is it just a, um, you know, Going back to Lenore, uh, Commissioner Lamore's comment, along San Benito, are we doing sound walls? Are we doing? I think that's what we decided when we discussed it previously, that the backyards would be. Along, along these lines, right? Yeah, right along okay. there. But he means on the San Benito Street extension, there's going to be a sound wall there, right? 
on the behind, behind the open area. Yes, correct. Behind, behind the, the open area. area. Behind so you'll area. be able to view the open area from, mm -hmm. from the Samuel Street. Okay. Correct. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For surveillance, that would be. Yeah. Okay. Hopefully, no frisbees will be going sailing over the <laughs> sidewalk. <sun wall. laughs> If you notice on the tot lot, they provided a gate surrounding it too because of the corner that it's at. Mm -hmm. So there's a little gated area for the children to there. So. Well, and I'm very yeah. appreciative mm -hmm. of the applicant. Thank you so much for uh, yeah, proposing the open areas. Uh, it's a, it means a lot to I think all of us. Yeah. I know it does you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> any any other questions for staff? No. There's no further questions. I'll yeah, open I have a question. Oh. Okay. Um, Chris, Chris. Well, has everyone noticed about? You know, we notice the regular stakeholders and the school district. And I think when this came before us, so I asked if you would talk to, yeah. I just want to make sure, you know, the schools have some kind of say, you know, in anything that goes on around that it's going to impact them, you know, the most. So. Thank you, Commissioner Alvarez. That, that is correct. It was uh, the notice of the tentative map was, was sent out. Um, uh, for the public hearing, and when the mitigated negative de declaration was uh, cert uh, was uh, in consideration for public hearing, it was sent out specifically for public review. Uh, it was, um, school districts received notice on on that and and had a thirty day thirty day period for for comments as well. Okay. So yes, okay. Thank you. they were properly notified. We appreciate that concern too, as as staff. Anybody else with questions for staff? No further questions. I'll close the, uh, I'll open the pub public hearing, excuse me, um, for uh, 6.50 p.m. Any speaker cards? Abraham. Chairman Hivoy, we have no speaker cards, but Mr. Sullivan, uh, the applicant of the project is here. If he would like to come up and. Thank you, Abraham. Uh, my name is Jim Sullivan. Uh, commissioners, Mr. Chair, it's good to see you again. I think I was here uh, about a year ago. Um, and I just wanted to go really quickly, uh, Commissioner Alvarez. I did reach out to both the district, uh, John Talia, uh, leaving him my uh, contact information and trying to give him basically a status of, because I know that the, on the district level, they kind of want to know when kids are potentially going to come in. So for this project, we still have to get our additional allocations. We need to go back through final map and improvement plans. Uh, we have to do extensive improvements, obviously. So you wouldn't see any school-age children being generated from this development uh, until uh, the earliest would be the school year of 2016, so essentially two years from now. Um, I also reached out to, and, and actually I think Maxine left, she, wa she was the principal at, at Ladd uh, Lane Elementary School, and Kip Ward is, is the new principal, and so I called Mr. Ward uh, and left my contact information with him, just letting him know that um, I would look forward to meeting with him, going over the plans with him, showing him basically everything that kind of came out with the mitigated neg deck that we had done, the traffic report, and then also to let him know that it's probably about a two-year process or so. And in, in all likelihood, it's going to take about a year and a half to go from the first house to the last house. Um, obviously, one of the nice things will be that the roadway, uh, south side roadway, will go in first. You know, that's typically we have to have all the improvements in bef before we start building the houses. Uh, and the city engineer has um, had asked me to work with the neighboring property owners on the Rakovich property. Uh, UCP, and we actually had g granted to the city uh, kind of an, uh, an easement uh, and allowed uh, UCP to go forward on our property to start building a portion of that road. We're hoping to catch up with them actually, uh, and so that all of this is going to come together in a very nice manner. Um, Going back, I, I, I want to thank uh, Abraham and, and, and city staff for doing a great job. It's been about a three-year process uh, for us from when we initiated the, the pre-zoning. Uh, there were a couple of things that I just wanted to point out with regard, by the way, my idea was the Frisbee golf, so <laughs> I'll kind of take credit for that. <laughs> and I want to explain to you actually one of the reasons that I kind of came up with that 
as well as my original proposal was to do the horseshoe pits, you know, kind of on the parcel, is it parcel B? Um, is that these areas, they're kind of dual purpose. So part of it uh, serves as a retention basin, you know, during the, you know, two, three months that we have kind of heavy rain. And, you know, we're basically directing the water from the streets, from the rooftops into these areas. And there's other things. There's bioswales along the interior street. Uh, there's some swales at the, or uh, some uh, bio retention areas at the, at the back of the cul-de-sac. But the biggest parcels that we're, you know, trying to utilize also as landscape features, uh, they're going to get wet. And, you know, and hopefully this year we get more rain because we need it. But kind of, you know, November, December, January, or, you know, whatever, maybe it's December, January, February, those are the kind of the three wettest months. They're not going to be um, as accessible as it would be, uh, you know, during the summertime and during the springtime and during early fall. And the one concern that I have with the tot lot is I don't want to construct something and after a bad winter, you know, there's, uh, there's a settling problem kind of with that. The Frisbee golf is very easy because, you know, essentially they're just kind of, you know, metal poles with the, like the little basket that has kind of chains over it. So that's perfect. Horseshoes are obviously very easy and they're very easy to replace if necessary. I loved, uh, I think, uh, staff's comment with regard to the Frisbee golf is a little bit more geared towards the adults, and so parcel B would be nice to be geared more towards kids. My, my thought, and in, in I, what I would ask for your consideration is, instead of the tot lot, let me come back and work with staff and maybe have some swings. You know, I mean, we could have swings are something that, you know, I mean, they're essentially metal poles. It could be kind of soft landing you know, that area can still act as the retention basin, but I'm not going to have, you know, kind of a huge structure that might settle kind of, you know, indifferently. So I would just ask for your consideration on that. I'd be happy to work with staff uh, on that. And uh, I thought it was a great report, and I look forward to, uh, to building you guys a, a, a beautiful project here. With that, I'm open to any questions, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you, Mr. Sullivan. So. Um, and I appreciate your, your efforts to contact the school representatives. So am I correct to say, though, that you were not able to confer with them over the plans? They, they didn't get back to you? No, they, yeah, they didn't. Get, unfortunately, they were kind of, by the time we had gotten all of this stuff done, it was over the summertime, mm -hmm. and I was told to kind of call back, but wait until school started. And I think that this week, with it must be back to school night or something like that. Yes, it was just yeah. yesterday. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, and I have it at, at, at my school next week. I'm on a member of the PTA okay. where I live. But uh -huh. the uh, so I, you know, I, I I will, as I told Commissioner Alvarez before after our, after this last, I will personally drive over and introduce myself to Mr. Ward. He's really the the, the one that's going to be affected the most as a principal, and give him a complete breakdown of kind of when we're going to start. Mm -hmm. Typically, our biggest season for doing the construction is, is really April through August. So that's when the majority of this work is going to be done probably in the three months, you know, or so that, that school is out. I mean, we'll grade the site probably in, you know, April, May. We'll start cutting the streets. But everything will be paved and ready for the new school year in 2015. We won't probably have deliveries until either, you know, late 2015 or early 2016. Okay. Any questions for Mr. Sullivan? I, I, I like your comment about the, the tot lot. You know, um, you know, you don't need a whole lot of structure. Kids just like to run around. I know my kids, they go down to Dunn Park. And, you know, there's the, I think it's the cut uh, tire. You know, and then the, the, you know, on the swings, and then it has a cement kind of a sidewalk all the way. You know, they, they take their scooters. My daughter does her her skating. You know, and then there's trees and benches around, and that's mostly what parents want is just a little place to get away. You know, and, and you know we could use a, I, I hope you use a lot of um, you know drought resistant. Oh yeah, you know, that's yeah, a condition. You know, that's, yeah, uh, you know, and that's all we want is just to be able to watch our kids. You know, in an area. You know, kind of. 
Well, uh, you know what, what I, so I have three kids and, and they're all older now, but I know that, you know, the parks that we used to go to, what I kind of envision would be a nice kind of like a, a you know, a metal swing set and you'd have like two swings for the young kids, you know, with kind of like the little safety mm -hmm. seat type right. thing. You know, that's where the kids, you know, aren't going to get out. And then you have, you know, two other s swings next to that where the kids who are a little bit older, you know, like to swing and kind of jump off. And I just have to make sure, and I'm sure that we have enough room for the radius, you know, and, and you know, we'll still do the little fence to make sure that we protect, you know, those kids that when they kind of go there. But I just wanted to make, sh you know, sure that you guys were aware that if this isn't going to be kind of a year-round type thing that's open. Oh, yeah. You know, we'll have, during the wet months, you know, we have to let these areas do their job, which is to, you know, oh, kind of yeah. filtrate that storm water. Well, we understand. I thank you for that. I can be flexible on that. Yeah. I think you're headed in the right direction. Right. Yeah, and, 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 and um, It sounds like you're, you're going to do something uh, good there. Yeah. It might not be a structure, but it's going to still have some kid amenities, so. Yeah, Madam Vice Chair, I, I loved your comment, you know, with regard to keeping it nice. And we certainly, as, you know, the people that are going to be selling it, want it to be nice. Right. When we're gone, though, I mean, the one thing that I've kind of understood is the people that are going to be paying into the CFD, mm -hmm. you know, I'm sure that they're going to be, uh, you know, kind of on, you know, the, the city, you know, to the extent that, okay, hey, let's make sure that we clean it up. Well, and certainly those neighbors, are, yeah, and certainly the neighbors that live there, you don't, nice. yeah. That's an I important tell you, thing. Um, the city's a little lucky. I'm not in a subdivision with a sawmill that's looking like that. I don't know why these people don't protest more than they do, but uh, it needs to be maintained, and, and especially uh, uh, an open area where you're doing recreation. It's different in sawmill. You can let it go a little bit, but when you have people habitating it, then it has to be clean. Yeah, I, I would recommend, I think that there was a, the, the question that came up about uh, where the sound wall would be. I think it's great to leave these areas open, and I know particularly on the big parcel, is that parcel A? Yeah, yeah. Where, the, where the Frisbee golf is. Right. So it, it's going to be lower, you know, I mean, uh, you know, that's the, kind of the deepest of all the three parcels that we have, but it might be when we go out there, I certainly don't want to put a sound wall along San Benito because I, I, I think it'll look nice to see. But we I might have to do that. like a vinyl clad, you know, chain link fence. I just don't want to have, you know, errant throws with a Frisbee, yeah. you know, get. And these aren't going to be, you know, mm -hmm. the par five, you know, Frisbee. These, these are all going to be par twos and par, par, par threes, you know, so nobody's oh. kind of winging yeah. it. But I don't want Frisbees obviously going out into mm -hmm. San Benito Street. Concept as well because you don't make that tunnel on San Benito Street because because it doesn't have that six foot eight foot high retaining wall it gives you more open yeah uh, and not the tunnel yeah so good job on that thank you so much I, th I think also that you know the landscaping can help mitigate those errant tosses too once you get into that yeah of detail yeah okay any questions for the applicant. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Yeah. Anyone else in the audience care to speak on the item? Any other cards, Bill? I mean, I mean, no more uh, cards, Chairman. Okay, then I'll close the public hearing at 7:04. Commissioners. I, I move that we adopt Resolution PC 2014-2028. I have a motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Oh, oh, yeah. And, well, let's see. Um, Discussion on that. I think well, the, the, uh, the applicant was requesting to work with staff on alternatives correct. with swings. So, some flexibility. Uh, for the applicant to work further with staff on placement of something that's good, doable. And what am right. I trying to say? You know, <laughs> what you said. That right. works with the retention facility. Yes, thank yeah. you. That's so we have further with the retention facility. Further discussion on the motion, uh, commissioners? Uh, no, it sounds good. Does that sound good? Okay, so. Um, and the motion is to include working with staff on flexibility on the 
functionality, parcel functionality of the retention area. Where we, on the retention area. I think we know what Thank you. we're trying to say, right? <laughs> okay. We got it. Thank you. So I do have the motion and a second. second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Item number five, it's been approved. Tentative map application number 2014-2. Congratulations. That brings us into new business. Department reports. Like we're going to talk about the complete streets plan for Nash slash Tres Pinos slash Sunny Slope Roads and McRae Street. Thank you, Mr. Chair. At this time, I would like to ask Ms. Mary Paxton if she could come forward, please. Good evening, Commissioners. I'm with the I'm Program Manager with the Development Services Department, and the City of Hollister was awarded a Environmental Justice Complete Streets Grant in 2012, and we uh, initiated a co contract with a consulting firm in 2013 for the, the grant. And I don't know if you're aware of the fact that the, the Complete Streets Act was passed in 2008. Part, the legislative intent of that law is to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, uh, reduce vehicle miles traveled, and also to improve health. The application for the grant, I'd like to back up also and say that we have a partner with the San Diego County Council of Governments, and you probably know Mary Gilbert in the COG office. She was yeah. instrumental in assisting us with the application for the grant, and I think she had a huge role in us securing the award. Uh, and she's been a grant partner all through this process. Uh, as I said, it, it's an environmental justice grant, which means that we had to make extra efforts to try and do outreach to members of the community that are disadvantaged and that may not necessarily understand how to participate in the public process. So as a part of that, the city contracted with the Youth Alliance to do a door-to-door -door survey. It was a bilingual survey, and we have with us today, Art Barone from the Youth Alliance. There were 70 advocates that did this survey and Laura C Cortez. And so I'd like for her, for them to just both share the experience a li little bit with you and maybe she can share with you a little bit of her experience, what she heard. Because I think you know as a commissioner, it's one thing to get something from staff, but to actually hear it from somebody who was there talking t to the public, that uh, she's our messenger. Good evening, uh, Planning Commissioners. Um, I think this was a great effort by the city. Uh, it was a great collaboration with the Youth Alliance to get not only the youth involved, but to target the um, population that's not usually included in a lot of these um, surveys, our assessments, our input in a lot of these projects. So we had seven of our youth advocates. Most of them uh, were uh, seniors at San Benito High. That's why there's only one here. The rest of them are off to college. So uh, Lauda's also in college, but she's at Gavlin, so she was available to come and speak on uh, some of her experience out there doing the surveys. And most, I think five out of the seven of the youth advocates were bilingual since we were targeting multi-unit housing. And, um, and also we went to a senior uh, uh, multi-unit housing area also to get their input over by Rancho Junior High. So I think we got a pretty good assessment of um, the whole uh, population. And Laura can talk about some of the concerns that they had. Good afternoon, my name is Laura Cortez and I'm one of the seven youth advocates that was helping out with the um, outreach at doing the surveys. And um, as a community member and also I'm counting myself as a, the Spanish speaking community that is not very involved in this processing. Um, I, the four major, I would say, um, uh, concerns that they had was um, that they, w they need they were talking about having more light lighting in the streets um, having more uh, public uh, transportation and also uh, bike lanes um, they are their economic financial situation is not the best so they were saying a lot of them don't have cars and um, they usually walk and have bikes so they ride their bikes and they were asking and they were saying that it was very they felt not they didn't feel safe and they were um, very um, 
well, they were they just didn't feel safe um, to ride their bikes. They they think that they're you guys could do a better job of providing safer uh, tra uh, bike lanes for them to b uh, walk and also ride their bikes. And um, also, they were saying about crosswalks. The 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 wide of the sidewalks is not. Uh, they say it's not real. They don't. It's not very appropriate. Like for the distance, so they could cross. If they feel it's dangerous, and they don't have the prop the proper uh, amount of time to cross those uh, crosswalks safely. So they're asking more, maybe to um, some way that they could get safer um, crosswalks, so they could feel safe and walk the streets and ride their bikes. And um, yeah, that were those were the major issues that I heard from the community, especially the Spanish-speaking community. So, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Uh, thanks for taking part of that survey. That's very yeah, important to get your input. Good job. I don't have any questions, but I have a comment. I want to thank you very much for, I know how hard it is to speak before the public, but believe me, it gets easier and easier the more you do it. And, and um, well, I have a 10-year-old daughter, so I love for her to see um, Hispanic, any, any young lady, but especially Hispanic young ladies, um, you know, putting themselves out there and, and because that will be a role model for her to, you know, I can point to you and, and say, hey, we had a, a, a nice young lady today speaking. And uh, I just want to let you know how much it means as a father to me to see you do that, okay? Thank you. Thank you very I, it much. Was, it was hard, but I also feel the same way as you. I feel that Hispanics and Latinos need to move forward and speak uh, out. And yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. A any young, you know, I mean, I, I'm any young lady, but yeah. especially, you know, being Hispanic myself, you know, I want to, mm -hmm. you know, push her to, you know, put yourself out there yes. and, and, and do, you know, go out of your out of your comfort, comfort zone. zone. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. It takes a lot Thank of courage to go door to door, too. Nervous, so I was good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm very impressed really with good. you at such a young age to get up there and speak like that. And I have it written down because when I was your age, I had to write it down. So you did a very good job. And, and thank you for your uh, concern uh, on, the, on those safety issues. Yeah. And mm -hmm. It's nice to see the youth involved. Yeah. Uh, the future is the youth. And yeah. Thank you so much. Thank uh, also, you. Uh, You're welcome. The gentleman there for leading the youth. Very right. valuable. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, a lot of our youth are, uh, grow up in some of our programs uh, when they're younger, and then when they get older, we give them the opportunity to get in leadership roles. Mm -hmm. And Chris uh, Soto uh, was actually appointed to the uh, Parks and Recs Commission with their efforts and saying they wanted a youth voice. So the youth they deserve a lot of the praise. Thank you. His, his mother r raised my kids. So Chris is a, is a very nice mm -hmm. young man as well. I watched him grow up from mm -hmm. a baby. Yeah, <laughs> yes, he is. Yes. Yeah, Thank so, you. Yeah, thanks to the Hollister Youth Alliance, too. Yes. Thank you. So through this grant process, the, the framework of the grant, what we said we'd do, we would have three stakeholder meetings. Uh, with We would identify stakeholder subgroups, and we would have three workshops and that would be used to help inform how to develop the complete streets plan. So we, ha we did have three workshops. We had three st stakeholder subgroups. The, one of the ways we identified the stakeholders is we sent out a postcard advising everybody on the corridor fronting with property fronting the corridor that we had been awarded the grant and if they were interested in learning more about it or participating to, to let us know. So that was one way we identified a stakeholder for our subgroup. We also included John Taliha from the Hollister School District. Samio High School was in transition with our superintendent, so we had representation from the high school, but it, it was in flux. We had about three different representatives for that. We also had some of the commercial property owners on the Tres Pinos corridor. Uh, and a resident from the uh, Vista Meadows Senior Apartments. We also had a s specified our with our s we when we had our second community meeting, uh, we con 
concentrated with a second stakeholder subgroup with the commercial interests on the corridor. So we tried to get some of the property owners, particularly on the Trespinos corridor, to participate in a subgroup meeting. And then we had a, a follow-up focus subgroup meeting also for McRae Street. It was problematic. It's so. Uh, we have a PowerPoint that was presented to our city council. I don't know how much time you want to take on this. We can show you the whole uh, PowerPoint presentation or just highlight some of the concepts that are in the draft plan. You've also been given a copy of the plan. I don't know if you'd rather, if you'd like to have somewhat of a presentation. Uh, I, I think, uh, Mary, I think it'd be fine if you could just go highlight through the uh, okay. All right. presentation. And this is a presentation that was provided to our city council uh, in July by, by our consultants. And are you all familiar with the term complete street? Uh, just for the benefit of the public, uh, we, well, here's the study area. We have Nash Road, Trespinos Road, Sunny Slope Road, and writing the request for proposal for our consultants. Nash Road is Old Hollister, pretty much. Trespinos is what be kind of replaced our downtown. It's pretty commercial there, suburban. And then Sunny Slope is just more of the suburban Hollister newer develop. And then we have McRae Street, which you all know was our mini bypass until we had our actual bypass. So that's our study area. And there's a definition of a complete street just for the benefit of the public. It's a safe, comfortable, and convenient to travel by automobile, foot, bicycle, and transit. And I think it's reflecting that change uh, in philosophy that a street isn't just for a car. It, it's for all users, no matter your age or ability. And here, this is the slides that they presented showing how you build a complete street. You can see they're, they're adding different components. Uh, there, there's more vegetation, wider sidewalks, lighting. It's, uh, was touched on tonight, on-street parking, uh, a median, street trees. Uh, there's a traffic circle in the back, and then the buildings are moved toward the street. It's not just a big parking lot that you use to access the commercial uses. And here they're showing there's more people on the street. Uh, I've already explained we had a process of engaging the community with the subgroup meetings. Uh, there's some pictures, and then this is from from our workshop. There was a mapping exercise at the first workshop where people were asked to mark up the maps, what improvements they thought there should be. Uh, that shows some of that, and there was also a walking audit on part on the Trespinos area. So this is an example, a summary of some of the issues that were identified on the McRae Street area. Yeah and Trespinos Road. And then there was an online survey and the Youth Alliance survey in addition to input from the, con the workshop. But if we could move along to the concepts and uh, it's important to understand that these are just concepts, they're, they're not construction drawings, but having a plan like this will make us more competitive for getting grant funding to try and bring some of these things to reality. So um, here on Nash Road, one of the concepts there, I think we all know that, that, the, it, that the high school would like to see the road cross, uh, close. There's an issue with pedestrian safety, student safety during the school day, and then also when they have events at night and, and special events. So one of the concepts is to build what they call a street table or a raised street. And this would be from Monterey Street uh, back to, you all know where the O'Donnell gym is, west. a little bit about to mid-block, that mid-block between Monterey and West. Mm -hmm. And the, the raised street would have retractable bollards. You could see there's a bike path there still, and then there's the sort of the white chevron. So it's anticipated that the bike lane would continue through that raised street. And one of the things our consultants pointed out is, is that the street should remain open to the public for pedestrians and bicyclists. 
and in conversations with the Youth Alliance, they, they said that a lot of the people that they surveyed that live near Line Street walk to the commercial services on Trespinos Road. So they really need to have that corridor. Uh, completely closing the street to the public would be a real problem if you didn't have a car and you lived on Line Street, from what we heard. So uh, a second w issue that, that was heard also is, and I think Laura touched on that, it's not safe crossing these streets. Uh. They're wide, the traffic's going too fast. So there's recommendations for uh, Stripes there, those are high visibility crosswalks and then a roundabout at Rancho and Trespinos Road. Some of the things we heard at the workshops when they introduced this concept, some people weren't convinced that was the best solution. They were afraid about safety. They were wondering about trucks going through. And one of the things that the consultants discussed when they introduced the concept of the roundabouts it, and they also said, well, what about bicycles? And they said, you see there's not a dedicated bicycle lane there in the roundabout where they're showing them. Uh, the reason is, is it forces the traffic to slow down when it enters the, that intersection. And it also, there, you could see the high visibility, the white striped crosswalks. When you, if you're a pedestrian crossing, when you're gonna cross, you can break it up into segments. And the first section, you just have to look one way when you're gonna cross. All you have to worry about if you're crossing. That's heading eastbound in that situation. And then if you get to the middle, then it's another baby step. All you have to do is look at what's coming going westbound. So it, it's giving you more p protection as a pedestrian. Uh, one of the things we heard at one of the stakeholder subgroup meetings, a person who doesn't have a business, uh, well, she does have a business, she, in the Adams Square Shopping Center, uh, she said that she, when she wants to turn to go towards Airline Highway, she's, a, she's not comfortable turning left out of there. So what she does is she goes around at a Gold's Gym and then cuts around. Mm -hmm. Well, the roundabout accomplishes the same thing for her. It's a, it's a safer way to just turn around. Uh, this, there's also a second roundabout at Ladd Lane. This one, you could see in the middle, it's sort of an egg shape. The reason of, for that is because they're, they're still keeping the four lanes between Ladd Lane and Airline Highway or Pinnacles National Park Highway. <laughs> Highway. <laughs> I have to get reprogrammed. And so that in that gray area is also to allow a truck to drive over it because there's going to be a lot of delivery, delivery trucks mm -hmm. using that at Safeway and some of the commercial services there. So the, the, the gray would have a raised pavement that the truck can drive on, but a regular car wouldn't be able to navigate very well. So it forces, again, the, the traffic to slow down. Uh, so here's, and then McCray Street. Uh, so let's just move forward. This is a better one. So some of the issues with McCray Street are today that there isn't really good pedestrian access between Park Street and the Chevron Station. We heard that from one of the stakeholders from the uh, Vista Meadows Apartments. And also that it's not safe crossing as a pedestrian around the intersection of Park Street and Prospect. So some of the concepts here are to have two roundabouts. One of them would be at Gibson Drive, the condos, and uh, also the parking lot at Rancho San Justo today doesn't have an outlet. Mm -hmm. here. So it's not really used as a parent drop-off. One of the concepts is to, to encourage parent drop-off at this location and by adding an outlet there, hopefully th more parents would be uh, inclined to use that as a drop off point because then they can just use the, the roundabouts also to get in and out and go back out wherever they're gonna go. We heard that there's a lot of concerns about safety uh, for drop off and pick up points on Park Street and Rancho Drive. 
Uh, also, part of the concept, if we could go back, oh, sorry, Jill, um, for here is to uh, abandon the section of McCray Street that's built today and move it closer to that parking lot and make it a two-lane street. The traffic volumes aren't nearly as high now that it's not functioning as a mini bypass. Uh, and to give it what part of the, the thinking was to make a bridge between downtown, start to, to extend Main Street and downtown to this corridor to make it more like a Main Street instead of just a, what it is today. And so that there's on, on street parking would be added and again it would be neck down to, to two lanes. It would be on, a, a, one of the terms they used a lot was a road diet. And some of the right of way that's not gonna be used now could be sold and some of that money could be used to hopefully to help fund some of these improvements. So we can uh, go again there. Here, this is uh, between, this is. Parkwood Avenue, Morgan Station. One of the things that was discussed at the meetings was there, Prospect and McRae parallel each other and is maybe we don't need both those streets. So part of the concept here is to eliminate a section of Prospect Avenue, make it a, a open space area. Uh, one, one suggestion at one of the meetings was that it could be used for overflow parking for special events if they had one of those color runs or special sports events at Rancho San Justo. So that, so. Uh, and if we could move, we could just go. So the, the, the plan has funding and implementation with priorities for timing. And we can just get to that. Keep going. So, so here's uh, one comment on, here's the section of Nash Road between San Benito and Cushman, and that would this concept would take away the mid mid dual left turn lane there, and there would be a, what they call a buffered bike lane. Because I think you heard again from Laura tonight that people don't feel safe on their bicycle, and that buffer is going to make hopefully make them feel safer. What one of the things the consultants really tried to do too is identify improvements that could be accomplished without changing the curb, because that significantly increased the cost. So that, that's a long-term improvement. In, in that case, Mary, would they keep the curb there and, and move the sidewalk, get the landscape buffer between the curb and the sidewalk? I think they were gonna just, keep the curb where it is. Yeah. No change to the curb. But yeah. And yeah. We're, we're creating a landscape buffer. Yeah. Between and one the of the sidewalk. concerns we heard at the one of the workshops was, well, what about left turn pockets? And they talked about I can't remember their term of art. Do you remember, David, for? Uh, oh, it's a, uh, uh, oh, I just read that. <laughs> Not a Cheryl, but they, but they had a term that they used. Right. Where, here, you could see here, it's kind of shared. No, that's not. Well, here there would be a Shero. The, the lane would be shared by a car or a bicycle. That's at San Benito and Nash. Mm -hmm. But I think further to the to the Should east, they were maybe they. No, that's not the one. There's so, so Mary. So, so what what they're what they're proposing and still needs still needs some study is widening out the lane so that a, uh, so flaring a the lanes facto. out, flaring the lanes out uh, to make them a little bit wider so that cars that wanna make a left turn can hug the center line and cars that wanna get by them would be able to you know, get by them by, um, you know, uh, passing them on the right on a, on a, um, uh, through the intersection and, and uh, that would be on both sides. It's not a striped left turn lane. 
uh, but this would be uh, on the other minor streets between uh, San Benito Street and, and Cushman. Um, it's something that uh, still need, still warrants study. It's something that uh, they showed us that they did in San Francisco, um, but it's it's an alternative that they've, they've looked at for making left turns uh, into those side streets. Trust Pinos Road, there would be, uh, the dual left turn lane would be replaced with a, over the long term with a landscape median and there would be channelized intersections that, and you could see a dedicated bike lane and instead of having four lanes there, there would be two travel lanes, uh, one in each direction. And here's an overview you could see and one of the things that was, uh, is recommended is having a that's a Taco Bell and Foster Freeze having a mid mid block crossing there to allow people to get through. We definitely need to put something there. It's way too long of a stretch, way too wide. And uh, every time I see somebody doing that, I pray for their life. That's insane. <laughs> we had to slow it down. Yeah. I c I'm so happy to see this, and I don't know what the future is going to bring for this plan, but. Um, we have to slow it down. We're, we're, we're mowing our people over. The kids can't ride bikes because I know I wouldn't let my kids out there when they were little. I didn't want anybody running them over. They shouldn't be restricted to not having that type of circulation. And so this, um, this act that the state did is a good thing. Well, and what's exciting now is, is I think we, we tend to think about having the are the state highway bypass transfer, but it's not just San Benito Street that, that's ours now. Tres Pinos Correct. Road is ours now too. It's our jurisdiction, so we can make changes there. Where a year ago, this all, this whole vision would have been much harder to accomplish. It's it's too bad we didn't envision it 20 years ago. <laughs> so, if you want to. At uh, Trust Pinos and Sunny Slope Road, one of the, the concepts here are to have uh, right turn islands for the pedestrians. One of the things our consultants talked about was the, the long distance to cross that intersection. And that also increases the, the phasing time for a pedestrian to get across. So it makes it longer for the, the traffic light to cycle. So the idea is to make it safer for the pedestrian it also will maybe help move more cars through the intersection because they won't have such a long signal fa cycle. Mary, can I ask you know, a stupid question? There's no stupid questions. So and they're probably the best years questions. And I've always wanted to ask, why is that same stretch of road that's only a couple miles long got three different names? I, I, I I've wondered this. I, I think <laughs> because uh, we, it was farming before. I, I think is why, because uh, Nash Road, w if you look at old maps of Hollister, Nash Road served Hollister. Right. And uh, then uh. Trust Pinos, the, it used to be orchards. So, uh, but it's, it's. We could call it Paxton Road. I think that would be a nice name <laughs> for it. And just rename the road and just have yeah. it one nice long stretch of one, one name. That it does bring nice. about some confusion. Yeah. If, if I just may interject, uh, Commissioner uh, Torres needs to leave uh, and oh, okay. has another meeting. But, uh, Do yeah. you have anything you wanted to Presume. share? No, I thought we had to report the budget. Okay. Very thorough report as well, so I okay. commend you and your staff for doing that. Thank oh. you. Well, th I think it goes back to the community, too, because yeah. uh, they, they help. Good project. We all know it well makes done. a difference yeah. to get community input. So thank you. Well done. Thank you. So uh, Sunny Slope Road, again, this, again, this the long-term plan is a, a road diet. <coughs> so, uh, and the, at providing parking uh, at Sunny Slope near the school, we, we know also we have to keep that bus parking there. But uh, that's, a, that's from a memorial to El Toro. So that's a little bit beyond the consultant scope, but they didn't just stop thinking at the end of the project area, they went further. They did the same thing with McRae Street. So, uh, 
and that's showing some of that vision. And then McCray Street north of Hawkins, adding the 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 bike paths that aren't there today. Again, a road diet. And then north of South Street, uh, there's the concept uh, in the short term, as they say, a road diet. Uh, that's a pretty nice wide right of way. This is going toward Premier Cinema uh, to Fourth Street. And over the long term, a dedicated two-way bike lane, and then also the on-street bike lanes. So I, that concludes my presentation. Are there any questions or comments, I, any I direction from the commission? I just have a general question, Mary. I really appreciate your presentation. and. I agree with uh, Commissioner Lenore. There's certainly a lot of improvement uh, that can be take place on Tres Pinos Road, that's for sure. Um, do you have any idea when, I mean, this is only as good as the, the implementation. Do you have any idea uh, when this possibly we can make some improvements out there? Uh, any timeline? Or? I think for McCray Street, it might be a little more doable to make some of those changes because there's infill development today. So uh -huh. they'll be putting in sidewalk curb and gutter and there will be some right of way that the city can sell that can help with some of those improvements the we're discussing the intersection of the rancho san justo roundabout because that's been considered as a traffic signal with some of the environmental review for projects near the corridor there they're not being constructed right now but when they come on board then I think we'll be looking at more carefully at the impact funding. And David, do you have any? So it's it's an it's important to to remember that this is a um, a design concept uh, report, and and the the greatest asset that this has is it gives us an opportunity to uh, apply for grants and gives us direction in the grants. So getting actual improvements in, uh, like Mary said, McCray, uh, the McCray Street corridor is uh, something that's, that's ripe for development. That will most likely be your initial, um, be your initial improvements. And uh, it's, it's something that's actually really ex exciting for, um, for me because that was a very large, um, a very large part of uh, uh, my desire to help Hollister improve for the better is uh, to make these projects in these areas work together. Uh, this this um, this report has uh, taken that, uh, and with all the community support and community input, it is you know made this corridor a a a, um, a potential improvement area. Um, so as if, if I had to uh, choose a portion that's probably going to be the furthest out, that would probably be the airline highway, um, uh, uh, Pinnacles National Park, Sunny Slope, Trace Pinos intersection, uh, because that, that's uh, going to take the Caltrans uh, review and, and approval to do that. Uh, but, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if, if, you know, over a number of years that that, that occurs because there is a lot of environmental um, positives that come out of that. Uh, so as, as grants are awarded and, um, you know, Mary and other staff has been very proactive in going after grants, um, you know, then you'll start seeing the improvements occur. And it, it's, it's also going to take a cooperation with uh, the property owners along uh, these corridors. So um, uh, as far as getting things done, uh, you'll see some right away. You'll be see some in a couple of years, and that's going to be an evolving process over over a number of years before you see any any completed uh, until you see the whole corridor completed. So it's nice to have the big picture as like a master yeah. plan, and and have uh, as these improvements happen. So you have the general picture. And, yeah. and now, we when you're doing planning, the planning applications, you can take that into consideration where. Uh, when you're planning the, those two undeveloped corners there, at Park, well, at least one. Mm -hmm. On the two, on the, uh, you can kind of plan for that. In the in the Gibson, right. uh, the Gibson piece and that McCray corridor, the City Council has already directed staff to implement 
uh, this um, those corridors as a you know as a um, concept to follow. Okay. Concept right. to follow. Yeah. yeah the, right. the development should follow the say if there's infill development, it should follow the concepts that are in the draft plan. That's good. And so, yeah. But we'll be taking the comments, we're finalizing our comments and then providing input to our consultants so they'll be preparing the final document and then we'll be conducting environmental review also. Okay. So. Well, look, looks great in, in my view. Well, I look you. forward to that. Okay. Yeah. Thank and you for your time. Really appreciate you, your presentation, Mary, and, and David, your input Mary. also. Thank you. Thank you. Now we go to, I guess that completes our department reports for this evening. Uh, we go was into. New business. That was new business. Oh, excuse me. Oh, no, that was a department report. Yes, it was right. a department report. I'm sorry, I can't see it. It's That's dark. A, okay. Yeah. <laughs> We don't have any for we don't have you further. You stand correct on that one. <laughs> this is my bad. <laughs> this, this vice chair. Oh, thank <laughs> you, you know David. That, no. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. Hey, let there be light. Okay. Well, that was w well done. I was very impressed with that. That's for sure. Planning Commission reports. I, I just want to add one quick thing. I want to uh, thank uh, Councilperson Ray Friend for believing in me and um, bringing that message to the entire council. And I really appreciate my appointment on the Planning Commission, um, enjoying it. And I, like I said, thank you so much for letting me be on here another two years. Um, uh, I love this town and I'm glad to be a part of, of, of making it better. Well, I for one, I, I think I can speak for the rest of the commission that we really enjoy you on our, our commission. You <laughs> really have some great input, Well, I Carol. think you've got to have at least one woman yeah. anyway, too, well, right? With your knowledge of the town, you've been yeah. I'm very here, appreciative right? of yeah. my appointment, yeah. so thank you, City Council, and more specifically, uh, Councilman Raymond Friend. Right. Here, here, here. And also, have, it's good to have you, Greg, uh, back on the commission for another two years. No, it's been fun. It's, yeah. been, it's been fun. It's fun good. being a part of a, part of a team. You know, it's yeah. a good, good, good uh -huh. group, good city. Love it. Uh -huh. It's really? fun to participate. Yeah. Yeah, yes. and, I, and I can, I just feel Carol's passion here. She loves uh, the city. No, nah, she's not passionate at all. For sure. I do have a, a brief report. I just want to thank everyone for coming to the drought workshop that we uh, came from the Green Committee as a, I'm chairman of the uh, Green Business Committee with the San Benito County Chamber of Commerce. And uh, we had a great turnout there. And it's also sponsored by the Water Resources Association of San Benito County and the Natural Resources Association and Farmhouse Communications with uh, Christina Chavez White. Uh, Buying, uh, buying the breakfast for everyone. It was uh, had a wonderful um, group of, s of speakers and a lot of information that was out there. I got a lot of good feedback. I just want to thank everyone for attending it, the uh, drop workshop. That's, that's my report. Any other uh, reports or anything from the commission? I entertain a motion for adjournment. I make a motion that we adjourn. I have a motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 We are adjourned.